For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so we'll start this video series off with the question of can amino acids be broken down or oxidized and used for energy? The answer, of course, is yes. This is something we've mentioned before. How, though? How is it that amino acids are oxidized and broken down for energy? Well, the first thing that we have to do is take the amino acids and remove their alpha amino group, and that comes off as an ammonium ion. What we're left with is the carbon skeleton, and that carbon skeleton has three potential fates. The first fate is complete oxidation in the TCA cycle to carbon dioxide and water, which is actually what we're going to be talking about because this, this whole uh, series is about amino acid oxidation. But that carbon skeleton can also be used um, in uh, gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis, to give glucose. And uh, a third potential fate is uh, ketogenesis ketogenesis to give ketone bodies. We're not going to really talk about two and three very much. We're really going to talk about number one, because we want to answer this question of amino acids being broken down or oxidized and used for energy. So the carbon skeleton, when it, when, of course, when it goes to the TCA cycle, it can give us a bunch of NADH, FADH2, GTP, that that carbon skeleton makes its way somehow or one way or another to the TCA cycle, then those carbons are oxidized for those reduced electron equivalents, um, NADH and FADH2, and of course we can get GTP as well. Okay, so, so this carbon skeleton though, we've talked about it being the alpha keto acid of that amino acid, but what is it really though? Because not every alpha keto acid of an amino acid is a TCA cycle intermediate. So what is this really though? Well. What we're thinking about is, is the idea that there are six or seven, depending on how you look at it, key products of the carbon skeletons that specifically can go through the TCA cycle. Or one of the other fates, which we won't talk about right now. Okay. And those six or seven key products are something that we, uh, or we really need to keep that in mind. One of them is alpha ketoglutarate. Another is succinyl-CoA. Third is fumarate, fourth oxaloacetate or OAA, fifth is pyruvate, sixth acetyl-CoA, okay. And the seventh is acetoacetyl-CoA, but I'm not going to really think about acetoacetyl-CoA too much. I'm going to take it to basically be just acetyl-CoA because acetoacetyl-CoA is just a four carbon acyl-CoA that can be cleaved into two acetyl-CoAs. So when I think about carbon skeletons being broken down to key products, um, the acetyl-acetyl-CoA's just get turned into acetyl-CoA's anyway, so I'm going to kind of ignore this one. Okay, so I'm really going to think about it being six key products, okay? And that's these guys. And so we're going to see the specific reactions, or at least we're going to get a really good idea of the specific reactions that actually take carbon skeletons of amino acids and give these um, key products, okay? All right. Speaking of which, that's going to kind of look like this. Okay, so of course, uh, this has got a lot of details here. Um, but this is just the, the TCA cycle for the most part and all the enzymes, citrate synthase, aconitase, so on and so forth. These are things that you should already know if you're studying this, uh, this material because a lot of it won't make sense if you're not really comfortable with the Krebs cycle and the, the steps that precede it. Um, anyway, what's going on here really that we're paying attention to is that you'll notice in these light pink boxes, we've got some amino acids there. Those are the uh, the glucogenic amino acids. And then we've got um, in this blue, or in this uh, orange box over here, we've got two ketogenic amino acids. And in the blue box, we've got amino acids that are both glucogenic and ketogenic. I'm gonna define those in the next video, but what you can see here is that these amino acids are feeding their way by these pink arrows into one of these um, boxed intermediates that we just mentioned. Right here, we got these guys coming into pyruvate. These guys are going into oxaloacetate. These guys are going in to, they're feeding their way into fumarate. These guys to acetyl, or sorry, to succinyl-CoA. 
all these to alpha ketoglutarate and uh, these all up here going to acetyl CoA. So the point is that what's happening is we're taking these amino acids and taking their carbon skeleton and feeding them into these boxed intermediates, pyruvate, oxaloacetate, acetyl CoA, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl CoA, and fumarate. And because these these carbon skeletons can from these amino acids can feed their way to these intermediates, these intermediates can make their way through the TCA cycle and we can get energy out of them. Okay, so that's the gist of the idea as far as how we can get energy from amino acids. We get the carbon skeleton, run it through the TCA cycle, we get some NADHs, some uh, GTPs, some FADH2s, so on and so forth. And those are things that are valued um, as far as energy goes. Okay, so um, I hope that video was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.